Hey, Adam. Hello. Hi, Shanna. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I am doing terrific. Uh, Thanks we're for just getting started right now. We're, people are joining. And uh, hi, Dob of D. For those who uh, are new to the show, uh, feel free to post your questions in the comments below, and we'll be sure to address them as they come. Uh, again, thank you for coming. I'm going to give a brief intro, walk you in. And then we'll get started. So hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Give Back. I'm your host, Adam Ignatowski. And today we have Shanna McCormick, the program manager of Rap for Bronx. They are a fantastic organization located in the Bronx that provides food relief and other services to those uh, in need in the community. Uh, Shanna, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. It was just you know, another day in paradise. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, dealing with a lot of stuff. I know a lot of people, a lot of people can relate. Can relate. Not, a lot of us in the food relief world have been extremely busy, especially during the pandemic. Um, but everything's going well. And thank you again for having me tonight. Of course. So I thought for the first question, let's just open it up. What is Rap for Bronx all about? What is your mission? Uh, we'll go from there. So Rap for Bronx stands for Relief Access Program for the Bronx. Um, and essentially, we are a food relief program that was born in the wake of COVID. And um, we have a heavy background in construction and in logistics. And, uh, you know, when the at the height of the pandemic, when everything began in March, April, um, the city was pretty much shut down, uh, as we know. And we had access to fleet, to laborers that were out of work. And um, we just got busy and Bronx was one of the hardest hit areas in our city. And they're usually also the forgotten borough um, that is going to change. We are going to make sure that that does, along with many other organizations that are working so hard to create awareness and, and change. Um, and so, yeah, we had fleet, we had laborers and, you know, they got busy with packing pantry bags back in um, April. We did our first distribution April 1st of 100 pantry bags. And thankfully, to date, we've been able to distribute over 850,000 meals. Wow. Um, we did not do that alone, of course. It's, you know, with the help of our volunteers, with different partners, organizations that have donated um, an amazing amount of food. And yeah, so we're predominantly a food relief program. Distribution is our big thing. Um, we distribute in bulk to various community-based organizations ranging from senior centers, shelters, NYCHA developments, um, places of worship, and, and beyond. So veterans, homes, um, and yeah. So that's what we've been up to, and it's just growing. <laughs> that's fantastic. So particularly as a program manager, what, what is your, your responsibilities, and how has that evolved as the organization has grown? So I actually began as the volunteer manager, um, which was pretty tough, um, trying to source people in the wake of the height of the pandemic. Um, but I have great friends. There were people through the organization that I work for, um, the construction industry that really helped out, stepped up. Um, and then we partnered up with New York Cares. We're now with Humbler to source some additional volunteers. Um, so that was my initial task. And then I kind of rolled into the logistics and distribution end of things and started managing the day to day. So Basically, my day-to-day -day is reaching out to CBOs, onboarding additional community-based organizations, doing needs assessments, seeing what they need uh, for their particular zip codes and communities, um, and then ensuring and finding a way that we can to, you know, um, service them and, and get what they need. Really kind of creating a relationship with the CBOs to have a better understanding of how we can help. And, right. you know, the schedules with the drivers and the logistics, that's the fun part. It's the exciting part. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it sounds like there's a constant grind and a constant, like, evolution of the program. So what has fueled you personally uh, to keep moving and keep grinding for Rap for Bronx? Um, personally, I mean, I, I have the heart. I've always wanted to help people. Um, and, you know, I started, like I said, through the volunteers and seeing how dedicated the volunteers were and how excited and happy they were to help. A lot of our volunteers are Bronx space too. So they were essentially helping their own community. It's like a big circle. Everybody's helping out. And it was really nice to see how 
you know, invested they were in giving back. And I was like, all right, I'm in this space and I'm going to make the best of it. And I'm going to, you know, make sure that my boots are on the ground, listen and engage with the community directly. Um, and there's a lot of community-based organizations that rely on us. For instance, Tuesday is one of our heavy days where we receive about 22 pallets of food and then we distribute same day. And so, you know, it's, I have to ensure that I keep that line open and still am servicing them because they depend on us. Um, and yeah, so I just, you know, I stepped in, I made a promise to make it work and, and I'm going to be here for the long haul. That's fantastic. And, and to that point, what are some of those positive impacts that you saw within the community that maybe you didn't expect when you first joined? They restored my hope in humanity. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> You know, it's, uh, I'm sure everybody has their own, um, you know, dealings and situations with COVID, how it affected them personally, maybe their families, their communities, um, not just the Bronx all over. But um, when I say that, you know, my, my hope in humanity was restored, you know, New York City was hit hard, the Bronx was hit the hardest. And to see people step up, um, and really be invested in helping their neighbors and their communities. Um, you know, I saw the best in a lot of people. And seeing how, like, you know, there's, we're not the only organization doing this by any means, you know, and working together in collaboration with other organizations with the same goal in mind and same mission or similar mission um, has been so rewarding. And I've met some really awesome people that, you know, being able to collaborate with them is a gift. And, you know, I learned so much from them. Hopefully they learn from me as well, whether it's through our mistakes, their mistakes, and just, you know, brainstorming and collaborating. So um, it's it's been a real true gift and, and to see how people are and, you know, how they're doing for what they're doing for their communities is really rewarding. Right. And, and when we think about it, you know, those from Manhattan or Brooklyn or Queens or and even Staten Island, uh, although they're, you know, a ferry away, uh, <laughs> you know, can they give back and get involved with Rap for Bronx? Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, we encourage and open, you know, we're open to anybody who wants to step in and help. Um, we can always use volunteers. Um, you know, thankfully, with people go, some people going back to work, I'm happy that people were getting back to work and all of that, but we really saw the decline, especially we, a lot of our volunteers were teachers. So in the summer, it was awesome. They were all like, oh, we want to help out and stuff like that. So, but with them going back to work, we've seen a little bit of a decline with regards to sourcing volunteers. So we're always open. I mean, the biggest donation that one can make is your time. And so people can reach out to us via our website and sign up and help. The more helping hands, the better. Um, whether it's, you know, helping offload trucks or packing pantry bags or, you know, eventually we're, we're going to be venturing more into uh, health and wellness programming and we could use all the help we can get with that. Absolutely. So if we were to get more specific, what are the certain types of ways one could give back and volunteer with Rap for Bronx? So we have a Tuesday operation, um, which basically consists of a trailer load of, of food coming in. It's about 22 pallets. Um, for people that don't know what pallets were or are, because I didn't know before I started this, by the way. So everything's a work in progress. Um, it's basically a board with about 50 to 60 boxes of food. Each box is about 30 pounds. So you got to come with your muscle. And basically we offload the truck and then we load up four other vehicles that then go out for distribution same day. Um, so it's manpower in that and women power in that sense. Um, just kind of helping creating an assembly line, loading up the vehicles so that everybody can get the food that they need uh, to be distributed. So that's our Tuesday operation. And then we also do our pantry packing. We just started that up again. Uh, and basically what that is, we create household sized pantry bags consisting of staple items, rice, um, beans, pasta, cereal items, uh, canned goods and things of that nature. Um, so that's that also takes we need all the hands on deck for that. And our goal for each shift is to create at least two to 400 bags in a shift. Okay, wow. So that's usually on the weekends, you said? And yes. On Tuesdays and the weekends. And yeah. soon to come, they'll be on Humbler. So check out Humbler, self-plug, they'll be there. Uh, those yeah. weekend events for sure. So uh, make sure for that. And then uh, we're getting a couple questions 
here. What do you envision your role post COVID? Post COVID. Um, so we really, you know, during COVID, it was more of an emergency basis. So we, we considered ourselves to be, you know, emergency food relief site, uh, which we still kind of are because the pandemic's not over. Um, but so we want to, you know, post COVID, we're just going to continue with regards to the food distribution because unfortunately the need is still there. Um, food insecurity is pre-existing. It's, it wasn't created by COVID. Mm -hmm. It was only exacerbated by COVID. Um, so we will continue that, but also what I envision for Rap for Bronx is more health and wellness programming, um, educating uh, the community on, you know, better options for food and, you know, the access is one thing. So our goal is to be able to provide access to better quality goods, but also ensuring that they're educated on you know, the different types of food and just overall health and wellness within the community because it's vital to our sustainability and progression. Absolutely, that makes a lot of sense. So, you know, we're, close, we're nearing the end of today, unfortunately. Is there anything before we cut to the final segment uh, that you want to call out and let our viewers know? Um, I think, you know, we're like I had mentioned before, with regards to volunteering, um, they can always sign up. We'll have our, our shifts on Humbler, um, but we're very open. We have um, on our website, they can reach out via email if they have any advice. We're always open to that brainstorming. Um, if they have any you know, advice that they would like to share with regards to how we can better serve the community as a whole, our city as a whole, we're always open to that. So that's, that's really it. And just be kind to your neighbors. You know, you never know what somebody's life looks like. You never know what their daily, you know, grind is or what they're going through. So um, I think just to spread love and to spread kindness is super important now more than ever. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Fantastic. Well, this kicks off another fantastic episode of the Give Back. Again, I'm your host, Adam Ingbatovsky. Thank you, Shanna, so much for coming. Uh, you know, stay safe, stay healthy as we, you know, navigate this pandemic and have a great night. You as well. And take care to everybody. Thank you for tuning in.